Um, we're going to be ready to start in a moment, if that's okay. So, okay, Leanne, thank you. Right, good evening. Welcome to the Joint Scrutiny Budget Meeting. Uh, it's six o'clock and I'll start the meeting at Agenda Item 1, appointing a chair. Can I invite any nominations for the appointment of chair for this meeting? Councillor Goodall? Uh, nominate uh, Councillor Thomas Jack. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can I have a seconder? Absolutely. Councillor Cook. Lovely, thank you. So that means Councillor Jay, you'll be chairing this meeting. Um, if you'd like to come to the front or you can stay there where you are. Thank you. I'll come down there so you can help me. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, next item, apologies for absence. We have apologies, I'm aware from going to this, Councillor Richard Kingston and Councillor Daniel Maycock. Do we have any of us? Councillor Cook. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. Councillor Box and Councillor Wade. Thank you, Councillor Oates. And Councillor Jason Jones sends his apologies. And Councillor Marie Bailey uh, is on her way, she's stuck in traffic. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting, do you have a move and a seconder, please? Councillor Harper moved. Seconder. Yep, Councillor Goodall, all those in favour, as a true record. Yep, that's carried, thank you very much. Do we have any declarations of interest for this evening? No. <clears throat> okay, so that moves on to the main item this evening, the draft budget and medium term financial strategy 2023-2024, which is a report of the Leader of the Council. So I'll hand over to Councillor Jeremy Oates, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, so before you, you have the latest version of the, uh, of the medium term financial strategy, uh, as members will be aware, uh, we started the process uh, back in September as we normally do uh, with the budget consultation. Uh, we had a member session on that. Uh, we also had a member session on uh, the uh, policies being considered uh, a bit later on in the year, uh, as well as member sessions on, on Treasury uh, and so on. Uh, so, so this isn't the first time all members have seen some of the considerations, but this is the latest version of the draft budget, uh, which still has to go from this meeting with any recommendations or suggestions or feedback uh, from the committee back to Cabinet uh, before being finally considered with any adaptations or changes at the end of February. Uh, so before you, Mr Chairman, I'll very briefly touch on some of the highlights. Uh, you will see uh, right at the top of the exec summary, uh, the general fund net cost of services is around £9.6 million. Uh, which relies on a transfer of uh, balances in the general fund of about £1.7 million. Uh, proposal is, the current consideration and proposal is that band, band D council tax will be set at £196.89, which is an increase of £5, uh, which is at 2.6%, so it's around 10 pence uh, per week, uh, and this is below the government referendum figure. Uh, the HRA uh, is also uh, included in with the, within these papers and, require, and requires a £1 million transfer from balances to balance over the three years. The report goes into uh, a bit of detail then around the increase in, uh, in the council house rent uh, and this year this will be capped at 7% uh, as, uh, as we've had that instruction from, from government. Uh, historically we've used CPI plus one. Uh, which would have been 11% at the time when these papers uh, were considered and this report was, was put together. Uh, but that, uh, that government cap has, has kept council house rent at 7%, so 3% uh, below 
CPI and then a further 1% below what we would have done in historic years. Uh, so you'll see from the, from the papers the impact that has had on the, on the housing revenue account, uh, and that's around £4.1 million pounds over the period. Uh, so within the papers, you've also got uh, around £10.8 million pound capital programme for the next five years and a housing capital programme of £38 million pounds over five years, uh, both of which uh, will have a, uh, a, uh, a borrowing requirement to meet those uh, in, in the current budget, uh, unless we are fortunate enough to get funding from elsewhere. Uh, the report does go into the key risks, uh, and you will notice that uh, whilst the budget is thereabouts balanced over the three years, uh, the figures do drop off significantly sharper than they have been historically, uh, and that is really down to two significant factors. One is the level of uncertainty that we are currently facing is higher than it has been for many years, uh, and the other part of this, which has also been picked up at previous scrutiny committees when we looked at quarter performance and, and some of our projects, is the, the rate of inflation, uh, which was, uh, has been unprecedented and certainly uh, not predicted. Uh, so, so there are certain, a cer certain amount of challenge which has increased and been magnified uh, dur during the budget consideration. Um, so with that, uh, Mr Chairman, I suggest uh, as the policies have been re uh, referred to and talked through in the past, uh, I suggest that we're open to any questions or discussion from, from your committee. I just wanted to highlight some of those issues before we start. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Okay, thank you very much for the summary and uh, open to the floor to any questions. Councillor Denny Cook, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, not questions as such. Um, I think Cabinet members opposite will appreciate I've lived this process for a long, long time. I, I think I understand it fully. Yeah, it's just um, a comment and I'll start with certainly um, not holding uh, officers or councillors in this council responsible for, you know, obviously, the, the finances of this council as such. We know it's a global problem, certainly the inflationary problems caused by, you know, the war in Ukraine and post-pandemic. Um, obviously, when we talk about 9.6 million spend in year one of the new proposed budget, but 1.7 million is being taken from reserves. It, again, not judging anybody, that's the nature of what it is. But that normally gives you a flavour of the problem you're facing longer term. You know, that first year's idea of what you've not really got. It's not always an exact science, but it gives you a flavour. Now, my understanding is, yeah, we've currently got a three-year balanced uh, general fund budget. Fantastic, brilliant, well done to our professional officers. It means services can continue. But we know, as we've known for probably the last decade, there is a longer-term problem. And I think, I don't think the answers are here tonight, and I wouldn't look for answers here tonight, but I think we need to start thinking collectively as all members and all officers that what is the long-term strategy now? Because we're looking over five years, an eight million pound problem. If I was to put the budget papers in front of this committee right now from 10 years ago, we were looking balanced for three years and an eight million pound problem over five years. We've had this problem for nearly a decade, and every time we think we've got a grip of it, the government seems to move the goalposts, whether it was time to strip back new arms bonus, whether it was, you know, we were promised 100% um, um, NNDR retention, we only got 75%. Uh, next thing was they're going to strip out under fairer funding our uh, business rates growth. Uh, obviously, there's business rates uh, re reset that's been put back to 2025. So there is longer term problems coming. Great news for tonight, and I'll sit here and say, is it's good to see it balanced. We can get on with it. But the question I'm going to keep raising, maybe not for this meeting, but as we move forward over the next processes, is what is the longer term plan now? Because it is time now to really start thinking. When, when fairer funding does kick in, and I think it is coming because we know about the problems in adult social care, and when the business reset happens, this council could potentially be in a lot of financial trouble. And it's coming from an international level and a government level rather than d decisions sometimes made in here. So what I would challenge, not tonight as such, but longer term going forward is, what is the long-term plan now to start setting five-year balanced budgets with a long-term view of how does this council function over the next two decades? Because we're going to need to seriously start thinking about that now. As soon as those two go in 2025, which is fairer funding and the reset of business rates, we've got some serious challenges to face. So it's great that it balances for this year, but with still that longer term challenge, as there has been for the last 10 years since austerity kicked in in 2010, there's always been a plan. And every time that plan's taken us to the next problem, it's taken us to the next problem, at some point we've now got to start thinking, how the, do we start thinking We've got to grab the whole problem now. And I think that's where I'm going to, the question I'm going to be asking over the next couple of months. But yeah, for now, congratulations to our very professional officers for getting us there again. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much. Councillor Did you want to comment on any of that? 
Thank you. Um, no, just thank um, Councillor Cook for his comments, and I think he's, he's hit the nail on the head. Every time we think we've got a plan, it, it shifts. Uh, with, within the papers here uh, and the latest information from government, pretty much takes us up to uh, the next anticipated general election. What happens after then uh, is, is beyond our, our predictive powers uh, and our control. Um, business rate uh, reset is still on the agenda. Fairer funding is, is still being talked about. Um, in terms of the, the direct question about planning for the future, uh, and as Councillor Cook says, it's, it's possibly not one for tonight, but one that we need to spend quite a bit of time considering. Um, if you look at the Borough Council's website in the, in the budget section, um, and the reason I'm referring to this is it's nice and easy, uh, under Council Budget and Spending, the, the, there's a series of bullet points. Uh, our, our income is, or, or our spend is primarily made up of £15 million of government benefit grants, £2 million government support, £14 million corporate rents, fees and charges, £4 million business rates, and I'm sure Dan, uh, Councillor Cook has made this point himself before, £4 million council tax. The majority of our income is not council tax, it's, it's fees and charges, government support, business rates, etc. So, so the, 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 the question... <laughs> yeah, uh, so, the, so the question Councillor Cook poses is a fundamental question. It's possibly not just for this council, but we certainly need to, uh, to, to do what we can in our bit to ensure that, uh, that, that we have some security going forward. Thank you very much. Do you have any other questions or comments on the floor? Councillor Michelle Cook. Thanks. Um, yeah, question for Councillor Oates in terms of the kind of the budget as it currently stands. It's obviously significantly moved compared to the kind of the, the team's call that Councillor Pritchard's um, led a few weeks ago, which is good. It's kind of a bit more of the realism's kind of back into it. Between now and when kind of budget comes to full council in a few weeks' time, do you see it shifting again? Thanks. Good question. Thank you, Councillor. Is that to Councillor Pritchard or to Councillor Ritz? I think the reference to Councillor Pritchard was a, a session that he performed oh, okay. me when, I was, when I was ill. Um, yes, if you go through the, the policy change, you'll see there are still some figures uh, which, are, which are left blank. They're, they're, they're indicated we're expecting a figure, uh, and one of the business rates is, is, is one of those. Uh, so I am expecting some change. Uh, what you've got in front of you, if you cast your mind back from when we considered the policy uh, the, considered po the policy changes we were considering, um, some of those had significantly higher figures than you see within, within this report. And that's, that's the nature of cutting our cloth according to, to what's available. Uh, so when we get those additional figures in, uh, depending on whether they're plus or minuses, that will have an effect again on those, uh, uh, on those decisions around those figures in there. So I'm not expecting the bottom line to change significantly but there is room for that to happen as we, as we get those final figures in. Uh, and, and if you do look at, at those, those figures that I'm talking about are those that we're awaiting from external bodies. They're nothing we, we have control over ourselves. So, so there will still be some shift. Thank you for that. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? No. Councillor Street people. Uh, yes, I've got a question. Um, does any member of the controlling group have a question? Because this is supposed to be a scrutiny committee, so come on, guys, scrutinise. I think you're right. I think the, the, the joint one is always a bit strange, isn't it? Because we've had lots of uh, sessions up to this point where lots of people have asked questions uh, already. Um, if I could come back on that, Chair. Yes, I appreciate that, but this is a public meeting and we all have a responsibility as councillors to scrutinise what's before us. So um, I'm looking forward to hearing everybody's scrutiny questions. Have you got a scrutiny question for us? I have several, yes. To you then, thank you. Okay, thank you. Would you like them uh, in a block or one at a time? Let's go one by one unless they're linked, unless they're linked. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, my first one is, a, is, is probably two together. Um, so we're looking, looking through the report, one of the things that's highlighted is litter, and this is something that's very important to a lot of Tamworth residents. Um, but what the report says is that you're planning to carry on with current policies. 
um, which largely rely on volunteer litter picks. And I think people in Tamworth would probably say, well, that's actually not sufficient. Um, and it's important to invest in services so that we can actually get this done as a council. Um, you might say, well, we haven't got enough funding. Well, um, you know, inadequate funding from government over the last 13 years has not helped that situation. Um, this actually brings me to my second question, which is, if you say we haven't got enough funding to actually do the litter picking ourselves, then why are we spending money on, and I hate to sound like Scrooge, but why are we spending money on extras like £6,000 for extra fireworks and five thousand, uh, sorry, over £5,000 for extra events? It's not a lot of money, I appreciate that, but... I said in this chamber before, we should be concentrating on things that we absolutely have to do and not the extras. And I will declare an interest here. I have an extremely nervous dog who does not like fireworks, but I still think there's a serious point there. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Rhodes, did you want to come back on that? Uh, yeah, I'm just scrolling through the budget book and I can't find the particular line now, which is always the case when you're looking for it. Um, no, I was going to pick up, sorry, Councillor Pritchard, I was going to pick up the existing budget line and you can come in on the policy change if you so wish. Um, if you go through, and I can't find it for love nor money at the moment, if you go through the budget book, you will see that this council already spends in excess of a million pounds a year in keeping our streets clean and tidy. Uh, for me, uh, that's a million pound which could be used helping other services. Uh, and, and as I'm sure everybody in this room appreciates, um, it's, it, this is a classic example of a local authority having to pick up somebody else's problems, issues, or whatever uh, through litter. And I, I appreciate a lot of that. Uh, some of that can be, can be avoided, uh, particularly litter that comes, blows off uh, industrial operations and, and so on and so forth. Um, but there is already over a million pounds spent on beautification. Uh, in terms of the volunteer support, I am eternally grateful for volunteers who go litter picking. I do a bit myself, uh, and I'm sure, I think I've seen everybody in this room do, do, do their fair share. Um, it's, it's, it's those things that, that bring Tamworth together and as a community, and it's, it saddens me that we spend a million pounds and rely on volunteers to clear up and keep our town as, as, as clean as it is. And I appreciate the concern that the public have that it isn't as clean as they'd like it to be, because uh, it's not as clean uh, as, as I'd like it to be either. There is a policy change, which I'll hand over to Councillor Pritchard to introduce. Thank you. So proposals in this budget include hiring more staff to undertake and support the litter cleansing operations of the authority. So. Um, we're actually investing more money as part of this proposed budget to do that. We're um, undergoing a large amount of works in the HRA estates, uh, people may have noticed, and to support that, we're bringing in um, a team with a, 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 an extra vehicle uh, who will help support that operation, and obviously they will, they will be helping um, supplement the wider street scene operation. So, you know, we're actually proposing to hire more staff to help clean up litter. I think, uh, you know, in terms of the comments about volunteer litter picking, that's more to recognise the, the efforts they put in. Um, and often, you know, volunteer litter pickers go places that the council doesn't. Um, you know, a, a lot, of, lot of litter picking I'm involved with, involved with when I'm going out are places that actually aren't the council's responsibility. So I think it's more, you know, recognising and thanking these um, residents who, you know, roll up their sleeves and, and jump in and, and help keep the town clean and tidy. Thank you very much. I'll just treat people. Yes, thanks very much. Um, you've also highlighted in the report risks that arise from the backlog to repairs and maintenance to corporate assets, but you've been running the council now for, I think it's 19 years. Um, so what's been going on, guys? Um, how much faith can we put in your promise of a plan of action? Um, some years ago, councillors Cook and Pritchard claimed that they'd fixed the roof whilst the sun shone, but there's no real evidence of that, is there? Was that a question? Well, I think he is there. Okay, over to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for the question. Um, I think the, the, the simple answer is uh, that historically over the last 20 years 
this council has set its budgets based on the priority and priority need uh, and where corporate assets have needed repair if they have been sat within a certain criteria or it's been affordable then they've had those repairs there are things which have never been affordable and as a result have never been uh, repaired and invested in uh, i'll give you an example the the shops that sit uh, just over my left shoulder uh, we now have an opportunity with government funding to invest in those and repair those the council's never been in that position before because it simply hasn't had the finances uh, so i don't think it's a case of uh, a case of neglect i think it's a case of cutting the, the council's cloth accordingly and prioritising uh, ba based on need uh, and based on, on, on investment uh, in some cases in terms of return, in some cases in, in case of, of usability. Uh, so so I, with all buildings, they deteriorate over 20 years. Some will have deteriorated quicker than others. Uh, but I, I think this council has, has done what it can to keep those, uh, keep those properties in, in the best condition they possibly can. Thank you. I've got a question to break it up a bit unless you want to come back in on that. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, we had over 700 responses, so the, the best response we've had to public engagement. I just wondered um, if you could give some insight into how, how that has fed into the budget process. Um, well, as you can see, it's, it, it's part of the consideration, part of the report in, in front of us. Some of those uh, have given us reassurance. Some of those have been specific uh, responses uh, which have been processed uh, and looked into. Uh, in terms of the, the general themes, uh, we consider those and take those on board whenever we consider uh, a, a policy change. Uh, and also, should there be any shift in terms of uh, the money available, as we referred to earlier, that's where we'll be looking for direction in terms of, in terms of priority. Thank you very much. And thank you to everyone at the Council that's involved in uh, making that happen is a great response. Councillor Clements. If I can just come in with a comment, Chair, um, 700 responses is better response than we've ever had. Um, we've had a new um, head of HR in Tanya Phillips and her and her team have worked exceptionally hard with engagement um, and obviously my new portfolio hold, hold a role. Um, we've worked really, really hard to get to work out how best to engage with members of the public and residents of this town. So I just um, wanted to put that on record that more engagement has taken place. We've worked really, really hard. The team have worked hard and, and that's shown in only 700 responses, but it's more than we've ever had. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Councillor Street people, do you have another one? Or do we, or should anyone else want to come in? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, just one final question. Um, the report highlights as high to medium the risk to the investment strategy. Um, as we know, some years ago, we acquired some capital money um, from the sale of the golf course, which was then invested and turned into revenue. You've said that the government's reviewing what councils will be permitted to do with their investments. How quickly might the guidance that we get from government be changed and what impact might that have? Councillor uh, Oates. Unfortunately, I don't know when they will give us that guidance or what that guidance uh, will, will include. Uh, what, what I do know is that uh, historically, uh, the Treasury management and our investments have produced a return and those, those, those returns have been fed into, into our revenue budgets. Uh, if we look later on in the, in the report, uh, and I can't remember the page number off the top of my head, uh, there is some sensitivity uh, analysis around the property funds. Uh, and uh, you'll remember when we first had those property funds introduced, uh, we were made aware that you know sometimes they'll go up, sometimes they'll go down, and they'll, they'll, they'll move uh, throughout. Uh, presently, they're on a bit of a down, but we've had a, that comes off the back of a, a large high. Uh, so overall, we're still expecting to get that same return uh, on, on those that we that, that we have been receiving um, or that we've we've been accounting for um, in terms of the government's changes in uh, in their proposal in, in what we can and can't do uh, what I do know uh, from personal experience is property funds and that type of investment have been promoted and supported significantly by government 
uh, over recent years. Uh, so I would like to think that's relatively safe. Uh, I think there's a, there are other issues uh, in terms of where the money is acquired from that is used for those investments, uh, but, uh, but we don't have that issue in, in Tamworth. We only use the money we, we, we currently hold. We don't go out and, and borrow from somewhere else to invest uh, elsewhere. You know? um, so, so I think it's more around that side of it rather than the property funds themselves. But uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I, I'm, uh, I, I don't have the detail, so I'm only, uh, I'm only basing this on, on the information that, that I've got available. Thank you. Did you want to come back in on that point? Uh, yeah, thanks, Chair. I appreciate that you don't have the detail. I just wondered if you've got any inkling, um, because I think that could have a really serious impact on what investments we, we currently have and what we might do. So um, I'm sure you will share any information you've got as soon as you have it. OK. Uh, I, I don't have an inkling on the timeline, but that's the very reason it's included in that, in that risk assessment. Uh, we included items last year in the risk assessment, which... Uh, which this year we've we've put contingencies against. So it's that process of, of highlighting, and that's that's the exact reason it's there. Thank you, um, Councillor. He was, was in my blind spot. I saw you first. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking at page one three nine of the appendix to the survey results, and I wonder if you could give me some background information or a bit more information about the fact that 27% um, weren't at all happy with how they would trust Tamworth or a council. It's a, it's a page that refers to how much do you trust TBC. Um, I think that's quite a worrying figure. Only 4% said that they... Sorry. Only 4% um, came back and said that they trusted TBC a great deal. I wonder if you have any um, comments on that. OK, thank you. Councillor Oates. It's a little bit lower than it has been historically, but it's not far out from where it's been, uh, to my knowledge, for the last 16, 18 years. Uh, it's disappointing that, uh, that we have that level of trust in uh, that the people of Tamworth have that level of interest in their local authority uh, and what we need to do is, is try and you know, ensure that the factual stories in terms of service delivery get out there because the council actually does a cracking job uh, in, in the majority of cases it's only the, the bad ones that we hear about uh, so in terms of, in terms of that it's, it's lower than uh, I'd like it to be uh, and there's some work needs to be done there uh, in terms of communications it's not far off what it has been historically, and we know in Tamworth we've traditionally had a low level of satisfaction with, with the local authority. And that doesn't just apply to the local authority. We've had some, uh, uh, some very recent, uh, I think it was September, October time, uh, some information from a resident survey the police carried out. Uh, and what they found was the fear of crime in Tamworth is the highest in, in Staffordshire. But not only that, the company that ran that operation, it was the highest in their... Uh, throughout all the five different police authorities that they deliver. Uh, and, and they couldn't quite understand that because the actual level of crime in Tamworth uh, is, is relatively low and whilst it plateaued for a few years, is still decreasing. So there's something, that, there's something there in, in terms of uh, people's awareness uh, and, um, and public vis visibility uh, that, that possibly needs to be worked on because there, there is a low satisfaction rate uh, across all public sector. Thank you. Did you want to come back on that? Yep. Yes, Council if I can, please. And whilst I do understand that, I think the perception of the public when they see those figures, if they see those figures, will they'll be very disappointed in that. And yes, I don't, I'm not denying that the council do a very good job. Um, I'm not denying that the police do a very good job, but it's not what our public are seeing. And are we going to do any work? Is the council going to do any work to explore why people feel like that? Right. Uh, and, and I think what you've hit upon there is, is the very crux of doing this sort of work, is to find out what the, what, what the feeling is out there. Uh, yes, we do have a new comms team that, uh, that grew slightly last year, uh, and it's about finding the right ways of getting those messages out. Uh, I received an email only last week 
uh, about returning to the, do you remember we used to have the um, Talkback Tamworth and a few other, uh, other magazines? Uh, people, uh, somebody asked me if we could consider bringing those back. Uh, well, what we know is the, the world has gone onto social media uh, and the newspaper is reduced into, the local newspaper is reduced in terms of circulation, but there's still an appetite. Uh, so, so I don't have the answers here, but it's stuff we, we need to consider. And we need to reconsider what used to work in the past and what worked successfully and, and what can we do in terms of getting those, uh, those accurate business messages out uh, from, from in terms of, in terms of the, the, the service that the staff provide because they, they do a cracking job in most cases. Thank you. Um, I have a question before bringing Councillor Cook. Break it up a bit. Um, <clears throat> We've got a couple of heritage assets in the town, which, you know, the jewels in our crown as a town. But we know they're way on the budget. Um, is there any thinking on that for the future and how we can reduce the weight they have on the, on the budget? Okay, thank you. Uh, one, one springs to mind immediately, and there is a budget change uh, an increase in, in the budget line uh, in, the, in the papers in front of you, and that relates to, uh, to the operation of the assembly rooms, uh, which, which is a yeah, significant uh, weight on the budget, uh, as, is, as is our uh, support for, for, for the castle. Um, what I can say in detail, in not detail, but uh, specifically with relation to the assembly rooms and the use of, uh, you'll remember we invested heavily in uh, the redevelopment of the assembly rooms and, and investment in there. Uh, we've now got a fantastic building. Uh, however, we've had to put an extra £158,000 in this year for, for additional staffing. Now, on the face of it, that seems significant. Well, actually, we opened the assembly rooms and then COVID closed it. Uh, so during that time, we took a number of members of staff out of that, uh, of that area and budget. So, so it's, at the minute, it's, it's replacing those. But you'll notice in year two, that, that budget returns uh, back down, that, that's taken back out, because the challenge is that that should be an income generator. Uh, and, and, the, and the challenge to, uh, to the people managing that is, here's the, here's the additional staffing, now go and make it work and get a return so we can, we can cover those costs. Um, some of our heritage buildings will continue to be significant in our budget in terms of expenditure, uh, and, and that's, the, that's the direction the council has set upon uh, historically, uh, I'll use the castle as an example. Uh, you know, we, we support the castle uh, every year uh, to the tune of uh, hundreds of thousands of pounds because we believe it's important. We believe it's important to tell our local story and heritage. We believe it's important as a landmark, uh, and we believe it's an important building that needs preserving. So, so we choose to support that. Uh, we've done a number of pieces of work over the last few years uh, around commerciality of that uh, of that asset, uh, and as a result, the the, the contribution we make. Uh, has, has reduced. Um, so so it's, it, it's about getting the balance between our priority to look after those properties uh, and celebrate our history and heritage in terms of the castle uh, and, and accept that uh, and accept that that's going to be expensive <coughs> and then balance it with, with income generators uh, and the opportunities that, that other assets uh, such as the assembly rooms uh, could, pr could provide. Okay, thank you. Yeah, good to hear um, work being done to reduce that weight. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Danny Cook was next. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. I've got three questions. you want me to, again, do them one at a time? Unless they're linked. No, they're not linked. Uh, yeah, sorry, something Councillor people raised. Um, obviously, when we first started looking at property funds in 2017 and 18, the rationale was that, you know, we stuck £68 million, as we regularly have roughly, through the treasury management process into banks to earn best part of quarter to a half percent interest, which is next to nothing compared to what we were earning, you know, in 2006, seven. And it was a way of, you know, certainly some of our capital we earned from the golf course, a way of invested it to fetch in some revenue benefit because property funds were running at four to five percent in interest. So sitting your money in a bank at the time as a council was just wasn't worth the effort, whereas property funds. Now we're seeing inflation and interest rates going the other way. Is there a potential review in our future of our property funds still the right thing to do versus what we could now get in banks? So throw that one out there as an opening question. Thank you, Over to Councillor Oates. Uh, as, as we sit here now, and based on the conversation I had uh, only yesterday, uh, there's no immediate intention to change those investments. 
uh, and I'm sure you'll appreciate it's, it's very volatile uh, and those investments are, uh, are generally over a longer period. Uh, but it's, it's something we need to continually monitor uh, and, and, and check on. Um, government predictions uh, within the papers, we've included those predictions on, on inflation uh, and, they, uh, and the government targets, if they get the, the inflation to, to where they want it to be, uh, then, then the follow-up will be interest rates, which will stimulate uh, in investment as well as uh, as well as growth. So, so it's an ever-changing picture. Uh, so, there is a potential that we'll change those investments, but we need to make sure we do it for the best return, but also with the limited uh, with as limited amount of risk uh, as we possibly can. Thank you. Do you want to come back on that before we go to another question? Uh, another question, if you don't mind, Chairman. Uh, obviously, at the state of the Borough debate uh, late last year, uh, there was two particular motions that I remember um, carrying. Uh, the first one was obviously a review of the vision of this council to take more account of those in society that need us a little bit more. Obviously, I don't think that's quite ready yet. Uh, obviously, that could have directed to this budget in a different direction, but that's not so much my question. Uh, the second one, I remember, was the leader of the council moved a motion at the state of the borough debate that when the uh, survey results were in uh, on the budget survey, that myself and the leader of the Labour group would see the results at the same time of Cabinet and be involved in that conversation, which has never happened. I just wondered if the leader had a comment on that. Councillor Oates. Uh, I don't think it's not happened through any deliberate uh, a deliberate attempt. Uh, I think it's one of those things that, uh, that that we've just missed. And I'm just looking through. I did exchange emails. Or Andrew, uh, so Chief Exec and I exchanged emails about arranging that date, uh, and that was pre-Christmas. Uh, so I'll, I'll have to check up on on exactly where we left that. But uh, yeah, that, that was the intention to happen, uh, and I think it's it's slipped by the wayside rather than being deliberately deliberately ignored. Thank you. And you had one more question, I believe. I've thought of another one, but I'll, I'll wait on that. Uh, yeah, just looking through the budget, and I'm not saying what, what's in there is OPS Ops 8 in the policy growth. I'm not saying it's wrong to put it in there. I've just got a question on the figure. Is it because that's the amount of money we had, or is it basically £50,000 for one year for defences on open space to start travelling communities accessing some of our open spaces? Now, the last figure I heard, if you just wanted to sail off the piece of county council land and the borough county land off Pennine Way at the top of Stony Dale was the best part of 200,000 just to do that one piece of land. To quote a, a famous saying of Councillor Pritchard's many years ago, is this just an aspirin in a swimming pool? Is it just a token gesture? Is that because that's all the money we have? Now, I say, <coughs> to defend our public open space is absolutely correct, no problem with that, but £50,000 isn't going to go very far. So my question is, is that all the money we had or is it a token gesture? So is that for Councillor? Well, what's your report, I suppose? Yeah, we'll come to you. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Chair. Thanks. <laughs> um, uh, that was a figure that, that was requested by the, by the portfolio holder uh, in addition to another £50,000 uh, in, in a reserve fund. Uh, this is a responsive uh, amount of cash. So this is um, the... Um, what's the word? When you go back in and make it good again. Uh, rest uh, restorative, re re restoring, yeah. It, it's about, it's yeah, it's a reactive budget and it's about going back in afterwards uh, and making sure that, uh, that it is, it, it is uh, re-secured. The other 50k, uh, which is in a reserve, is about that prevention in, in, in the first place. Thank you. Yep. Sorry, I don't think so much it's a question, more of a comment. Um, <laughs> I think the word you were looking for earlier and the leader was desperately searching for was subsidy when you're talking about heritage assets. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the assembly rooms is one that still, it shouldn't make me chuckle, but it does because it's not really a laughing matter. Uh, when the director um, of the assembly rooms approached me many, many years ago and said, if we apply for the heritage quarter funding that became the cultural quarter funding, that became the creative quarter funding, because we call it wherever we could to get the money from government, it was actually said to me, if we do this and we redo, we get the assembly rooms all brand spanking, all new on a sesame seed bun like it should be, like it would have been when it was first built, it will no longer need a subsidy. I walked out of that room laughing my head off and I continue to laugh my head off to this day. The assembly rooms will always need a subsidy because of the nature of what it is. And unfortunately, that's not an officer problem. It's a councillor problem. And when I say a council problem, I mean all 30 of us, because there's always been a drive for the assembly rooms very much to be a community asset as well as a theatre. 
And while we drive it as a community asset, it won't make as much money as it could. So it would need a 30 of us to actually sit down and say, no, it's just a pure money-making theatre now and the community are out of it. And I don't think any of us really want to do that, do we? So the reason I think some of the subsidies go into our historic assets because we choose to, to, to allow the community to use them like they do. So, yeah, I, I don't sit here and say we need to remove those subsidies. I sit, I sit here and say we need to understand them better, I think is where I feel on it. And that's just a personal comment, not really a question, Mr Chairman. Yep, thank you very much. Um, Councillor Chris Cook. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you on that. Uh, uh, page 132, um, just at the uh, very bottom of it. This is sort of carrying on off the other comment about the um, uh, percentage of the of the way that other people sort of um, uh, uh, to view the um, council. So I mean, all of us in here. Um, we obviously work we go over um uh, local uh, groups and that uh community groups there there is a a fair um, Uh, our residents out there, which obviously sort of give up all their uh, time, etc., and also how what was in the uh, community. I was rather shocked to have a look at the stats on that, on um, that, that other people sort of pulled together to improve uh, the areas. It's there, there was only a, a, a six percent of the people that obviously answered this, which said yes. And as um, So there's a twenty-six percent of them, which are on the fence, and they don't agree or uh, disagree. So, with regards to that, although this isn't everybody over time, I mean. It's only the uh, results of what we add in. Can I ask, um, Councillor Oates, if the council take action to him? Prove their percentage over this next year. Can we also take action to improve the um, um, percentage? Um, <coughs> I'm making everyone actually a kind of aware that there there are other groups out there which actually want to look after their area. Thank you for the question. Councillor, do you want to come on the question? 
Um, yeah, I think what we've got to uh, be aware of is when we look at these, these satisfaction rates is these are the ones we've got to take notice of because they're the only bits of data we've got here. However, this survey doesn't necessarily represent all the feedback we get. So if we compare, if we add other information such as uh, uh, information from our, our teller scheme uh, or from service users, etc., uh, then that gives us a, a more in-depth picture. And I'm not saying that the figures uh, will change, uh, but it certainly gives us uh, a, a better understanding of the, of the context. Um, what we have in front of us is a, is a reasonably good response to, to a survey uh, compared with other uh, surveys we've had in the past. So what we've got to take from this is the question, what is the issue uh, and what's generating those low levels of, of, of satisfaction? If we combine that with other information like the teller's scheme and the other feedback we get, uh, some of it might be very specific and it might be a service response that's needed. Uh, some of it may be around, well, I mentioned earlier, with communications uh, and, uh, and a, a better understanding. Um, so really, we, we've, got to do, we've got to do two things. We've got to ensure that we understand what's generating those low levels of, of, of satisfaction or those high levels of dissatisfaction. Uh, and if, like I say, if it's a service issue or response, we need to get involved uh, and, and get to it. We also need to understand whether that's coming from service users or a member of the public who maybe doesn't know about a particular service but has filled a survey in so therefore has to tick a, a box on something that they're, they're, they're not aware of. So, so it's just a, a bit of peeling back we need to do to understand it better uh, and if it's a service response then we need to look at what that service response is and it's a communications issue then we need to deal with it in a, in a slightly different way. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Tina Clements, do you still have a question? No? <laughs> Anybody else? Councillor Shree, people. Thank you. Um, it, this is really a question about the, the survey, which I think is great. We had a better <laughs> response than normal because, you know, we, we normally have a very low response, which is very disappointing. Um, I think you said 700 responses? 712. It's still a very small proportion, isn't it? It really is is tiny but you know I'm, I'm grateful that we've got officers who are working hard to improve that response looking at some of the questions though I'm just wondering whether we should perhaps refocus those in the future um, because we're asking people about you know Tamworth as a place to live which you know obviously we want to know what people feel about it but we're asking about whether people feel safe um, we're asking whether people from people from different backgrounds get along and Actually, those two particular areas, whilst it's very laudable that we should do things to help people get along, there's not a lot we can do. And certainly in terms of feeling safe, that really is a job for the police um, and other agencies. And I wonder whether when we focus questions on things that we can't do a great deal about, that slightly skews the responses we get. So I think my, my short question is, could we think in the future about how we could ask questions that are specifically focused on what we do as a council? Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Oates. Uh, I, I will speculate very candidly. Um, whenever a survey is going out, especially a survey like this that goes to everybody, uh, you will have a number of people going, oh, I need to ask this question statutory every year please can you insert it into your survey and, and, and make a, an, an efficiency in terms of the survey. Uh, so, so there will be uh, a, an element of that that takes place. Um, what I would say in terms of considering that the questions uh, included, uh, wherever possible, I do like to see consistency so you can compare year on year. However, if the questions aren't fit for purpose, then they need to be reviewed. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm quite happy to, to revisit those um, whether that's uh, we, we do that through cabinet or whether that appears on a scrutiny agenda or whether it's a, a whole council is, is, is a discussion to be had. Uh, but yeah, I'm, so, I'm sure we can, we can look at, at, at some of those questions and, uh, and address them more specifically. Uh, I don't know how we'll get around the, uh, the statutory questions which we'll put in there because the survey is going out so it makes an efficiency, uh, but certainly <coughs> if, we can, if we can frame those correctly that will, will help you. Yeah. Thank you. Do you want to come back in there? Yes, we could take the view that we shouldn't be doing other people's work for them when we're, uh, I, I was going to say, not flush with cash. So, um, yeah, thank you. 
Thank you. Councillor Andy Cooper. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just, just one question. I think I'm going to scoot back to right at the beginning of this meeting with, uh, with uh, the, the, the summary that um, uh, uh, Councillor Danny Cook mentioned with regards to the risk, the, the future financial risk of the, uh, of, of the fund. Obviously, it's, it's really good to see that you've balanced the, uh, the, the fund over the course of three years. However, um, yeah, there is, there's, there's definitely a future risk there. What are we doing as a council to address that risk and to somewhat narrow it, you know? Okay, Councillor Oates. Okay, thank you. Um, so, so those that are within our control, uh, we will, uh, you know, we will obviously uh, adjust our, our budget areas accordingly. Uh, and that may mean, you know, cutting our class and not spending as much on, on items that, that we wanted to in order to, uh, to keep hold of that. Um, in terms of the, those beyond our control, we can only anticipate what they may be. Uh, and uh, as you see, as we discussed right at the top of the shop uh, and Councillor Cook picked up on as well, that uncertainty in terms of government changes, how many times have we discussed business rate reset and it again gets pushed back a year, then another year, and then two years, and, and we're still discussing it. A uh, fair funding review was mentioned earlier, uh, and I'm not sure how many times that's been mentioned uh, by, by Councillor Cook in the past, but we're, we're still talking about it now, and it still hasn't happened. Uh, but we, ha we have to be aware of these and, and where we can mitigate them. Uh, in terms of the, the more immediate issues, uh, there's, there's a couple of budget lines uh, you'll notice in here. Uh, one that jumps to mind is the £460,000 uh, which is against the commercial income uh, and that is uh, with the with the economic climate as it is uh, there is a risk with energy increases and with uh, pressures on, uh, uh, on on business uh, there is a risk that we may lose some of our commercial rental income for example or some of our re uh, rates income so we've built that contingency in there to mitigate against that risk uh, hopefully touch wood we won't need to touch that uh, but should we need to that mitigates that so we we can, you know, we, we don't have to go dipping in uh, and panicking uh, in a year's time with a, with a lack of income. That will, that will offset that should we need to. Uh, and if we don't need to spend it, that rolls forward uh, into, into the year four and, and five to, to fight against that, that eight million. So, so what we will do, we'll continue to invest uh, through treasury management as fast as we can and as risk limited as we can. We'll continue to try and head off those challenges and mitigate against them uh, for example, that, that commercial uh, income uh, uh, contingency. Uh, and we'll continue to, to anticipate the challenges that, that, that come along. Uh, and unfortunately, like we've said earlier, and it was said uh, by Councillor Cook, you know, we're in a global market and a lot of stuff is beyond our control. We need to make sure we, we're in a position where we, we can mitigate against any negative impact that that, that, that brings along. Thank you. Councillor Wadrup. Yeah, going back to surveys and stuff, do we actually have res and, and residents? Do we have resident? Oh, what have I done? Sorry. Do we have residents focus groups? And if not, is it something that we, we could consider because they tend to work quite well and to get, but we need to get a balance of, you know, mix young, old and, you know, whatever. Is that something that we could consider? You know, and as a council, you know, I, mean, I don't mind, you know, helping and, and trying to work on that. So I'm not passing it to, you know, somebody else to do. I don't mind having an input in it. Thank you. That's right. Um, it, it gets to the stage where, where it sounds like we're using the pandemic as an excuse. Uh, and, and I really don't want to be. Uh, we, we set up a citizens panel a number of years ago, uh, which our previous head of communications uh, last year tried to try to invest in and, and get that that going again and they were they they were the the usual suspects as it were so those who responded regularly we we use them because they respond um and, and prior to the pandemic we had a number of other focus groups and the the uh, budget consultation uh, was very much focus group led you know uh, and we we targeted specific groups we also had one-to-one face-to-face -to -face sessions uh, uh, I remember historically in the, in the Castle Hotel we've done it where we invited residents uh, to come in um, and I think we also paid them um, but, uh, but, but since the pandemic uh, our former head of communications tried to get into this last year uh, but, uh, but has, chosen, uh, has chosen to leave the authority and we've got a new head of comms uh, who is aware of this very matter uh, and, and is already starting to discuss how we better engage with, with the public whether it be in groups or not 
so, so there is opportunity. We have got some frameworks in place, and it's about getting them back online and, and getting people re-engaged. Thank you. Did you want and, to come back in there? Yeah. And also, you, you know, when you're contacting residents or, mem or you know, put the, the um, residents of Tamworth, do we actually use various forms of communication when you're doing these surveys, like, you know, um, text messaging, polls, emails, you know, and, you know, paper surveys, because, you know, not everybody, you know, with accessibility issues can't access, every, you know, are we reaching out to everybody? That's great. As far as I'm aware, we we use every possible media we, we, we can. Um, it might be worth getting some more detail on that and get that circulated. But yeah, as, as far as I'm aware, we do we do use the, the different methods you've described there. Yeah. Thank you very much, Councillor Danny Cook. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's more of a comment again. Um, when it, when it comes to communicating, there is a tragedy Tamworth Borough Council suffers, and it's probably suffered it for. Since Tamworth Borough Council came into being in what 1963, well, the reiteration in 1974, whatever it is, Tamworth as a borough is 11.4 square miles. It's six miles deep, four miles across, and it's got 76,500 people in it. North Warwickshire as a borough council is 103 square miles with 55,000 people in it. And what I mean by that is when somebody throws a mattress on the side of the Marlborough Way in Belgrave, everybody in Tamworth heard about it in 10 minutes. In North Warwickshire, if somebody throws a mattress on the side of the road in Colesville, it's a Colesville problem. It's not a North Warwickshire Borough Council issue. And that's where Tamworth reputationally continues to suffer. So when we see, you know, the reputation of this council reputation sound trashed, it's because we're so compact, everybody hears about everything. If there's a theft in a local shop, one Facebook group will talk about it, another one will talk about it, another one will talk about it. It'll be the same theft, but the public are in three different thefts. And that's the problem because we're so compact. So I'm not saying we ignore the results of these surveys. I'm not saying we don't work hard to improve our reputation. I'd say let's just understand as well as a council, as a collective, that actually there is a complication. Now, what I'd like to see done is when people say Tamworth is a dirty town full of litter, well, let's actually compare to how much money North Warwickshire spends on cleaning up fly tipping compared to Tamworth. And I, get, I guarantee it's a hell of a lot more. Same with Litchfield spend a hell of a lot more on fly tipping than we do. But we have this reputation because everything's in your face. That's where I think we need to take some of our comms is how do we compare against other authorities in our area? Are we actually very good at this and it's just not seen? Or actually, is there a problem we need to address compared to what others are doing? Because if we just sit here and say, that's just the problem, it's what it is, we spend a million pounds on litter, the public's not really getting a flavour that actually Litchfield, you know, 170 square miles, might only spend half a million pounds on litter. And we're not getting a flavour to, to, out to the public of what is it actually this council is doing or not doing. So I think maybe it's the approach of how we ask the question and we get the information out there, I think, needs to be reviewed. Just food for thought. Yeah, good point. Did you want to comment? Or are you happy with that? Uh, no, I, th I think Council Cook's right. It's about context, isn't it? Uh, the, the only word of caution I would, uh, I would throw up, and I think it's already been alluded to, is when we're comparing, make sure we're comparing with apples with apples and pears with pears. Uh, <clears throat> so, so whilst North Warwickshire is significantly larger than us and spends significantly more on, on fly tipping, actually what does that mean? You know, uh, and, and getting a, a proper comparable benchmark. Uh, but yeah, happy to take on those, those comments. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments from the floor? No. Well, yeah, Councillor Michelle Cook. Sorry, can I just, um, just well, two, two questions. One's referring back to Councillor Wardrop's um, question earlier. Um, my first one is, do the play area refurbishment, um, you've got in for kind of all five years, do we know yet what the areas are, especially in kind of year one, um, where they're going to be? I, and also, has the Ros Rosper report come back yet? Not necessarily a budget question, but just a supplementary part of that one. Thank you. Councillor Oates. Uh, yeah, I'll pass on to the portfolio order. Thank you. I couldn't give you a list of the order of the play areas now. The authorities identified a number um, that it's working to um, refurbish. Uh, unfortunately, one of the key members of staff is off at the moment, so there's a, there's a, a slight delay. But you know, the money's in the budget, so we will set about refurbishing quite a number of play areas through the coming years. Thank you. Do you want to come back in there? I do. Thank you for that answer, Councillor Richard. Do you have any information of exactly those at the moment? Or if not, can you circulate afterwards if you didn't want to go public on that right now? Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Richard. 
Yeah, I can uh, pull together um, sort of a, a priority list as we see it, but I say just one of the key members of staff is off at the moment who's leading this work. Thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, and the other part of that question was, has the Rossborough report come back? Yes. I say the, um, the key member of staff who's dealing with this is off, so um, I will endeavour to get you an answer. Uh, unfortunately, I, I don't have it because I've not been past it. Okay, no, that's fine. Thanks. Thank Can you. Can I ask my second question? Was that okay? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I was just going to say, when um, Councillor Woodrow asked the question about whether or not text messages, etc., were used for um, sending out the survey, I know Councillor Oates, you obviously said you'd go away and look at that. I was just wondering whether or not the portfolio holder would know what was used for that survey. So Councillor Clements would like to answer. Over to Councillor Oates first. Uh, if, if Councillor Clements would like to answer, that's uh, th th that's entirely down to you. To you. I'm aware that currently, um, Councillor Cook, Councillor Wadjuk, that we use the email, we use paper copies, and we use text messaging. <coughs> I don't think we've got to WhatsApp yet, um, but that the, there's nothing worth, there's nothing wrong in looking at that. Thank you very much. Do you want to come back in? Um, no, just to say thanks to Council Clements. It's always good when the portfolio holder knows what's going on. So thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions from the floor? No. Oh, uh, Councillor Greatrex, please. Uh, it's not a question. It's just a comment and a statement. Uh, I've been sorry. I've been reading the um, survey here about safety. Uh, I read in the paper about three weeks ago that Tamworth is the third or fourth safest place in England to live. So I would ask everybody to bear that in mind. And what may come back from surveys may not represent what national figures show. Yeah, thank you. And I think that adds to the point Councillor Cook made there as well, context, right? So what's the context uh, against other towns? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Anything else? No. Okay, so thank you to the um, everyone who's had input in recent months to this. Thank you to the officers and the leader for bringing the report here tonight. Um, special thanks to the head of HR and to uh, Councillor Clements for getting the engagement up. I think that's important um, and we should be shouting about that. Uh, I think we had good input from both sides tonight, so thank you everybody. And uh, anybody who is watching online, uh, had I known the camera would be behind me, I'd have done a better job of the comb over, but thank you for uh, persevering. So that, <laughs> so that brings us to the end. Um, oh, no. <clears throat> See, this is why I need to sit here. I, I told you that at the start. So, members, I've considered the budget proposals approved by Cabinet at the meeting on the 19th of January 2023 and provided views on the budget proposals and counter tax strategy taking into account the prioritisation of resources. So that's the motion that we're supposed to be reviewing. Is that right? Yeah, okay. So can we have a mover and a second? I can repeat it if you... Councillor Simon Goodall. Uh, sorry, Chair, could, could you repeat it? It didn't sound to me as if it was phrased as a motion, but I may just have missed, missed a bit of it. Well, it's just the recommendation in the report. We don't need to move a motion as a committee. We don't need to move one. Yep, come on in. Uh, Mr Chairman, I think that the, the way it's worded is, uh, is, I suppose, part of the purpose and, uh, and an instruction or request that you do those two things. Um, I do know the officers uh, make copious notes at these sessions, uh, so all the, the issues and views uh, that have been raised uh, will be jotted down. Uh, and I, I will assure you, I will take those back uh, and, and discuss them. Uh, so if you, if you choose to move any motions, that's... Uh, that, that's up to you guys. This is just uh, uh, all I'm saying is the views and the issues that have been raised. We we have made a note of. Yeah, I think we've, we've yeah, I think you're right, Councillor Cook. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one that we consider the budget proposals. We've just done that. Uh, provide views on the budget proposals. We've just done that. It doesn't need a motion to say what we've already done. So I, I, I think from, from a personal perspective, I'm comfortable. We move on to the next phase. I'm happy with that as long yeah. as that's officially we're allowed. That yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much, everybody. Close the meeting at five past seven. Thank you. Thank you.